Hallelujah. I guess it's our turn, huh? Hey, listen, uh, Pastor Josh and Anna are out uh, for the day, and so Sheree and I have the opportunity to share with you, and what, what a privilege we had at 9.15. It was a blast, and so we just welcome you. Would you stand up with me? Stand up with Sheree and I today. You know, this year, November 10th, is 50 years of marriage together, and wow. That's, isn't that crazy? And you know, I don't know how we pulled that off. We're both 57, so <laughs> no, we're not. Anyway, but we're so excited to share with you. And, and we have some nuggets that we, we want to share, uh, just some golden nuggets that we've walked through uh, through our life. And some serious, some funny, some good. The good, the bad, the ugly. How many of you have ever walked through that series in time of your life? But we're going to read uh, on the screen uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. So if you can read along with me, this is the uh, NLT. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise, the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. Anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come, the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Will you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you that as we walk with you today and we just take some time in the Word, we thank you for your presence, your Word that never fails. You're always faithful. And we give you honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you go ahead and be seated? Uh, my sweetheart's going to kick it off this morning. And some of you have, uh, have wondered, and I always say, well, my girlfriend's over there. It's that cute blonde I run with. And so, Mrs. Hall, take it away. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. God bless you. You're such a wonderful group to minister to. So we're excited just to share some of the things it's taken us 50 years to get to. So I pray that they somehow bless your life today and help you to walk closer together and closer with the Lord. So much of it that we could talk about this morning, you can apply to a coworker, to your children, to all relationships, but we're focusing in on the longevity of marriage, building a rock solid marriage. So my first nugget today is kingdom principles. You know, Jesus came and he said that he came to establish his kingdom in the earth. And he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. We need some keys to walk through the perilous times that you and I are walking through right now. Amen. Amen. And so I just want to read some scriptures. Your kingdom come and your will be done, Lord, in Jesus' name. Starting in Ephesians 4 and verse 17, this described me as an unsaved girl. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they're hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they've closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. That's the world. That's the system of the world. There's only two. There's God's system and there's the enemy system, the world system. And so you and I have the blessed opportunity as human beings made in his image every day to make a choice and a decision to live by his system. System, yeah. to live by his principles, to establish his kingdom in the earth. Amen. So God's system, it runs on honor. It runs on respect. It runs on love. The enemy, the world system, if you haven't noticed from movies or TV or social media or wherever, it runs on distrust and disrespect and bullying and fear and all the things that characterize the opposite of God's nature. And what he's saying today is we want to see the blessing and he wants to give us the blessing. Yes. He wants to overflow our lives and our marriages with his presence and his blessing. So I just want to finish reading the rest of this chapter here. So starting in verse 23, he says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts thoughts and attitudes. Ooh, our attitudes? Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy, 
and stop telling lies. Don't lie to your mate. Don't lie to your kids. Don't lie to your coworkers. Stop telling lies. Just let us tell our neighbors the truth for we're parts of the same body. And don't sit in by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. It gives him real estate in our life. And when we go to bed at night and we're angry, the devil counsels us and counsels us with the divisive words that will destroy, not bring life. But God has called you and me to reign in this lifetime. He's called us to reign over sin, over darkness, over all these things that the enemy would want to bring. He has a better and a higher way, a higher system. And we want to be part of that. So don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live, but remember he's identified you as his own, guaranteed, guaranteeing you will be saved on the day of redemption. So get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So I would say a testimony that we would have is that there would be times when our three children would get in arguments and they would fight with each other and do crazy things. But what they didn't know was that without them knowing, we were in disharmony and disagreement. And we had given the enemy a foothold. We had given him a place in our family. So it's so critical, so important that we guard our relationships and we guard our mate. Nugget number two. <laughs> that was hot. Can I do that publicly? I guess I already did. So the nugget I want to share with you today is the power of our words. You know, I, I grew up with a very abusive, narcissistic dad who constantly was pushing the words, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never measure up. You can't do this right. You can't. He was a religious perfectionist. And to walk with that, of course, you're trying to please God, and it's impossible to please God when you have that, trying to, the, the tension that's there. Um, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, it says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You know, when we communicate, we, we communicate not only with our words, but we communicate in our spirit, attitude, and our gestures. And I, I know this doesn't apply to any of you in the room, but there's times where we've communicated and I don't even realize that I've done it. Shreel is gonna, how many of you know that's not a good sign? Uh, you know, we, we communicate different ways and we have to realize that Jesus himself said, John 6, 63, said, my words are spirit and they are life. So when, when we are speaking, what kind of words come out of our life? Do we exude hope? Do we exude life? You know, we, we are either appreciating or depreciating our spouse. Appreciate means to increase the value. Depreciate, of course, is to decrease the value. So what, what we realize is it's not just what we say, but guys and ladies, it's how we say it. So vitally important. You know, uh, we've been called to affirm and to lift up, not to push down. But not only that, we have both words and actions. You know, what we do is so important. Actually, our actions confirm or even validate more what we're saying. So if we're saying, sweetheart, I love you, you're amazing, but our attitude is bad and our actions are worse, what does that say? It's, they don't, we don't even listen to the words because the words mean nothing when our, when our attitudes are actions. So what do we do? Uh, we go on walks. Uh, my sweetheart loves to walk. Actually, she speed walks. Uh, I just kind of, you know, lumber along and, you know, so we've learned to kind of work with each other on that. Uh, we do cappuccinos every day. Uh, we have a cappa, cappuccino machine at the house, and I make us a cappuccino, put a little foam on top, a little cinnamon. Hallelujah. How many of you can get a witness on a cappuccino today? And, and so I make Cherie one, and, and, and then we have a, a puppy called Honey. And so I fix Honey a pup cup. She has to go out and do her business before she gets her pup cup. 
And then we go to our prayer room. Sheree has a prayer room. I have mine. And, and we spend our mornings, you know, an hour or so just praying. We read the Word. And that's how we start every day. We love bike rides. We lived in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We went hiking, biking. Uh, you know, I know this doesn't bear witness with everybody in the room, but guys, we do dishes. Was that a moan or an amen? I can't, I can't tell. Uh, shopping. My sweetheart loves to shop. I would rather take an arrow than go shopping. But I go shopping. I know every barista at all the malls. That's what we do. We also like snuggling. And I know you can't believe this one. Non-sexual snuggling. Man, there wasn't very many amens in the room on that one. But anyway. So we, we, we do chores together. And again, guys, listen. Open the door for your spouse. Wow, thank you, Doc, for that amen. I heard that one over there. We need to open doors. Why do we do that? Because greater love, John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this, than he lays down his life for his friend. Our spouse needs to be our absolute number one best friend in the entire planet. The word lay down literally means to lay down our soul or our suke. It literally means our will. And, and, you know, the two strongest willed people that I've ever met in the entire planet is here and here. And so how we've learned to function together and how we speak is a lot how we talk to each other, what we do with one another, and we've understood very clearly that we have learned to serve one another. One of the things that happened when we were going through a very, very difficult time um, we, and I don't know, I can't remember if it was a whole year, but we would say this, I consecrate a fresh and anew my covenant love to you. Yes, and we affirm that on a regular basis. And I tell you what it's done. It's it, it has allowed the appreciation level in our house, our love for one another. And if you're looking for a way to upgrade your marriage, then talk right. Amen. Mrs. Hall? Awesome. Awesome. Well, my next nugget is that we are empowered through agreement. Jesus said, if any two or three of you agree on earth touching anything, that it'll be done by my Father in heaven. So we want to take advantage of that. We want to live above strife and all the stuff that's in the world and come into a supernatural agreement. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? So if we're going different directions and we don't have a compromise, you're supposed to go the other way. Well, I, I, I try. <laughs> it ends up bringing division. And we want to walk in unity because more than anything else that matters in life, we can come into the presence of God in our home. And when you need prayer, your mate can be the strongest person to agree with you. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And what a promise that if you ask anything that he hears, oh my goodness, so good. So the prayer of agreement one of the things it does, it guards us against a vindictive spirit because we've got to be transparent with each other. We've got to say, I am wrong. Will you forgive me? I was jealous. What a, we, we can live above our flesh. Amen. We can live above the destruction in the world. First Peter 3, 7 talks to husbands and says, if you mistreat your wives, your prayers are gonna be hindered. But girls, it works vice versa too. If we mistreat our spouse, and you know what, if you're, if you're watching movies or you're watching TV or you're, you're do, just on social media, do you ever see, I mean, you do see people say, give all these compliments towards their spouse on special media, on social media, but I don't know if they do at home, but they do on social media where everybody sees it, but where it's really important is at home. And we, we want to be those that don't mistrust, but are mis, mistreat, but we want to be those that, as Jim said with our words, we are appreciating and building up that our prayers would not be hindered. The purpose that God has, he wants to bless our lives. He is a good God. Jesus came and he sacrificed his life for us to have an abundant life, an abundant life that's full of his 
presence. It's full of his blessings. And if we follow his principles, because there's only two, there's the system of the world and there's God's system. And if we follow his system, there's blessing. It's not like we're being deprived when we deprive our flesh. We're seeking our own way. We want to be selfish. We want to have, we want to be the one that's always right. God has a higher way. And rather than breaking generational patterns, especially for the future, guys, instead of having generational patterns to break, let's live above them. Let's live above them where there's not generational patterns that we have to break for our children, but where we can live above and pass on to them that life where we reign in life by Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you, sweetheart. You know, one of the, one of the great things that we have in, in being able to stand in agreement. Sometimes we, you know, we are disagreeable. We don't agree, but that doesn't mean we have to get in strife. We, we have to learn not to react, but to respond. Are you listening to me? There's so many times in our life where we, we're reactive and, and the Lord doesn't want us to be reactive. He wants us to respond because we walk in the spirit together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, no, another nugget that we have is humor. God's humor is medicine. In Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Nehemiah 8, 10 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Job 5, 22 says that we will laugh at destruction and we will laugh at famine. You know, we all live by faith. And there are times in our life where we're going through things that we don't want to have joy. We want to absolutely go the opposite direction. And how many of you realize sometimes the old man still hangs around? Mm -hmm. now, I'm not talking about your husband. I'm talking about the old <laughs> flesh. And so when we talk about humor and we talk about laughter, laughter does good like a medicine. So one of the, one of the times that we were on vacation, we came home and our youngest son had taken a Hot Wheel truck and had flushed it down the toilet. So we came home from vacation, and as everybody does when you come from a long trip, you go to the restroom, you flush the toilet, and it kept going and going and going. And so Sheree and I looked at each other. We have two options. We can cuss or laugh. Which one do you want? <laughs> laugh. Thank you. Thank you for that affirmation. And so we, we said, okay, we're going to laugh. Ha, 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 where is Timothy? Ha, 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 ha. Well, we've been praying about uh, a building for the church that we had pioneered. And in the middle of our laughter, the telephone rings and this businessman said, I've been praying and uh, I have something better for you and something better for me. And I'm thinking, we're ankle deep in poopy water. What do you have? <laughs> and he said, I wanna give you that building. And so in the middle of that situation, God showed up and God gave us a building for the first church that we pioneered. We've had the opportunity to be on different uh, trips, 34 different nations. And we were in, in Lucina City in the Philippines and flown, it was, Sheree was tired, we were wore out. We get to the, to the hotel room, there's that much space under the door. We get in there and there are mice running everywhere, around the couch, under the bed. And Sri just says, honey, I am so tired. Please pray my prayers for me. And she went out. And I'm thinking strategy, murder the mice. That's all I can think of. And so I got a trash can. I put it next to the curtain. I put cheese whiz in the bottom. I took my shoe off. They'd go around and around and drop in. Kabam! I'd kill them. all night long. I was killing mice. Hallelujah. Not the, not the mouse whisperer, the mouse killer. And then we were in Moscow on a trip, and Sheree had been reading This Present Darkness. How many of you have ever read that book? It's, it's just such an uplifting book. It's not. It's very deep. And we would turn off the light and, and turn it back on, and hundreds of roaches were running across the floor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So going to the restroom, it was <laughs> No, it was I'm, I'm sorry. We also did a recording one time, at least we tried, and this, we, we were gonna do a healing tape recording. 
And so we were reading from the scripture that the, the blind see and the lame walk, and then, then it was cleanse the lepers. And I don't know whether it was Sheree or myself, but, but instead of leper, it was lipper. And we cleanse the lippers. <laughs> and then, of course, we never finished that tape, ever, <laughs> because every time we tried, it didn't work. Um, my grandparents were married almost 75 years. Just like six months. Nanny and Papa, amazing. And she was a little tiny, five or four foot seven, four foot eight, Pentecostal, tiny little lady, kept a two liter Dr. Pepper under the sink. And she just, I don't know what you'd call that, a pepperolic? I'm not sure what you call them, but anyway. But, but she'd sip it all day long. And uh, my, my grandfather, he was probably five, 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 six, and he was a stocky little welder. And he'd come in, Nanny would be at the, at the stove and cooking something, and he'd walk past her, and he'd reach up, and he'd pinch her right on the butt. And he'd say, I love you, Marnie. And her name was Mary, but that was his nickname, I love you, Marnie. And she'd turn around and go whack right on the arm. She'd say, you dirty old man. <laughs> and then they'd hug and giggle and laugh. And, and, but we, we grew up with laughter and joy. And that's how our marriage has been. Many of the hardships that we walk through, we know that we have to lean on the Spirit of God. Laughter doeth good like a medicine. Yes, amen. 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 The last nugget I have for you today is about healing your spouse. I don't know if you ever thought about this before, but there's healing in your hands and there's healing in your words. And you can bring healing to your spouse. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 and 12 says two people are better than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. So there's a purpose in our marriage that we would hold each other up, that we would help each other, that we would see each other be healed. Like those words that Jim was talking about from his dad. It took years of the Lord working in his life and him casting down vain imaginations and me speaking life into him for him to come through that. Right? Yep. You know, when Amen. the Lord says that he, wa <laughs> he wants us to leave father and mother, to be joined to each other, to be one, there's a value that God places on leaving our parents yes. and becoming one in him. That value is so beautiful to him. And we want to build, take that and build a culture that is full of God's wisdom. So, you know, Pastor Josh talks about the law of first mention. And I just want to read out of Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent is lying to Eve, and he tells her, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw the tree was beautiful, its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom that's the first time wisdom is used in the scriptures. She wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some fruit, she ate it, and she gave it to her spouse. That wisdom, the world's wisdom, will never produce God's power and his way of doing things. And we are inundated with the world's wisdom. But he's given you and me the opportunity to cry out for his wisdom and let his wisdom come. His will be done. Remember the number of times that Jesus said, you've heard it said, but I say unto yeah. you. We hear all the time. We hear the degradation of men and their masculinity. We, we hear the, the setting up and the exaltation of feminism. We hear all these different things that are contrary to God's yeah. system and his wisdom. And so we get to choose wisdom. We get to cry out to him and he pours out his wisdom over our lives. And it brings healing in our relationship. I wanna share a testimony with you um, Jim's youngest brother, Doug, his wife, Carrie, went through quite a battle. 2017, he was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia and not given much hope to live. I, I think probably not given any hope to live as far as the doctors were concerned. So I was just talking with Doug before today, and he reminded me that he spent 86 days in the hospital, but Carrie was there. He's been at that time with dozens of types of chemo, 
five bone marrow biopsies, a bone marrow transplant, a two-year recovery. He nearly died twice, but husband and wife were there. Wife was helping him when he had the port and he had to have all these different things, you know, medically. She was right there, right there as his caregiver, right there supporting him. And you know what they did together? They watched all the library of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> and they laughed. They watched a video every night. They would find a video of something to belly laugh over. And so when I was talking to him, he said, we still do that today. You know what? Today, they, he's been completely released. He's walking whole. Isn't that powerful? But so there's, there's such a power in that agreement and knowing that we can be a healing factor with our, our mate. He stood on Psalm 118, 17. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. And in the midst of negative reports, he said, one day I'll be nothing but a distant mirror, a distant memory in your rear view mirror. Amen. And stood just trusting God. So there's power for us to heal and see healing in our spouse. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that's so necessary, and I'm going to end with victories and valleys today. All of us have celebratory moments where we can look back and go, wow and God showed up, or this happened in our lives. But what it absolutely necessitates is that we're sincere and we're authentic. You know, we, we have basically 30 minutes to share with you and say, well, how, how, okay, it sounds like a whole lot of Facebook marriage. No, I'm telling you, this is how we live. We're no different at home. You can ask our kids and our grandkids. Um, how are you? What do you do when you, when you celebrate something? In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And that's a great verse. It's a powerful verse. It became a, a focal point for Sheree and I in some of the hardest of our times. When you feel like, where is God? feels like my prayers have gone no further than my nose. I, what's going on? I, I, everything that I planned out is not working. So let me give you some, some victories, if I could do that. 1977, we were told that we could not have kids. Obviously, we have three kids, it's married, and our, our, we have 15 grandkids. Are you listening to me? How many know that be fruitful and, and replenish the earth? We, we took our part. Uh, we ministered in 34 nations together, uh, all over the United States. We've hosted Israel tours. Uh, Sheree's written books and music CDs. Uh, we pastored over 40 years. We've seen miracle signs and wonders. We pioneered, built churches. We were given a building, which I told you earlier. We took a church split in Minnesota that had five pastors in front of us. I was the sixth. And we pastored there almost 28 years and saw God move in mighty ways. We bought a uh, 8.77 acres supernaturally for 36,000 and bought another piece of property, sold that for over $800,000 and put that right into our building. There, there's so many things that, that we could say that say, wow, man, you guys are so blessed. Yeah, we, we are blessed, but those are victories. Those, those are mountaintops. We must celebrate our victories. It's, it's essential, it's necessary. But what about the valleys? Well, I, I could just say that we've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I know for 20 straight years, without a doubt, we, we've had more trials and heartache than you could write in a book. Uh, my mom was in a head-on collision 2011, and uh, uh, one lady died in the crash that was in the car, and uh, it, it was horrible. Uh, Cherie's mom had an extended cancer, colon cancer, passed away. Uh, we've walked through divorce with our family. We've had court cases all the way to the, to the appellate court, uh, walked through all of that. My mom died uh, in 2013. She was in a service, preaching her heart out, just sharing what the Lord said to her, exhorted the body, sat down, had an aneurysm, and went to heaven, 2013. Yeah, my brother, of course, had cancer, 
Uh, I was his bone marrow donor, and I, I got vertigo and couldn't even lay down for about four months. And that's been a continual journey. Cherie's dad died in 2020, and she didn't have an opportunity to even talk to him for about a year, or talk to him, but not be with him for about a year because of COVID. You look at all that and say, well, man, what'd you do? Well, we trust in the Lord. We made a decision that we were going to stay crazy in love with each other. It didn't matter what was going on. We were going to stay in love with each other, express that, show it. And we were going to, without a doubt, stay crazy in love with our Lamb of God, Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that's the most important. That's that threefold cord that can easily be broken. And so through all of it, we've walked together. We've given each other space and grace to be transparent and vulnerable without judgment. We've been able to express ourselves. There are times in life that, you know, for a while my motto was break them up and bury them and then ask God for forgiveness. <laughs> Say, well, boy, that's not very spiritual. Well, that was that reactive moment I talked to you about. But when we stop and go, Lord, that's not your nature. Your nature is heal, forgive, set free, deliver. That's your nature. So, so what have we done? We've, we've seen God's grace that has been so powerful. We've seen the steadfast love of our Lord that never ceases. We've seen God's faithfulness abound in our life and our family now 50 years. Amen. Jesus is a redeemer. He is a breakthrough God. There's not anything that's too hard or too difficult for him. And so today, we're not just talking to the married couples. We're talking to everybody. We're all in relationships, and God wants us whole. Can you say wholeness with me? Wholeness. God wants wholeness. So my sweetheart is going to close us out today. I trust that the Lord's ministered to you. Go ahead, baby. If you would, just stand, please. And if our altar ministers would come forward, I just want to invite you to take a step today. You know, there's periods of time throughout our lives, maybe even daily, that we need a reset. We need to reset, rethink, re just begin again, take on God's nature in a new place that we've been overcome by in the past where maybe our flesh has reigned. And I just want to invite you, every one of us up here have had our share of the flesh. And yet we stand and we walk by faith and we want to agree with you. Amen. These are men and women of faith. And I just encourage you today, come forward and let them agree with you in prayer, in prayer and be empowered as you leave here this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ, would you just bow your heads for one moment? I just want to ask us to be reflective and not be looking around. If you do not know Jesus Christ, if you have never and not been able to say, I've had a BC time in my life, and now I'm in an AD time. I've died in Christ. If you've never had that before Christ and after Christ, today is a day to make a marked difference and to turn and to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. So I just wanna ask you, I was that person that I read about in Ephesians 4 that had a heart that was darkened and hard towards God. And when I heard about salvation, I said, what? Save from what? Like, I didn't have a clue I was a sinner. We are all sinners. We're all in the same boat and we need a savior. And he's so wanting to minister right now to whatever needs we have. As Pastor Josh has said, we want this to be the easiest place to get prayer. So I just ask you today, if you don't know him, if you need prayer for your marriage, if you need prayer in finances, if you need prayer for your health, whatever it happens to be, something with your children. Jesus Christ is the answer and God is waiting to pour his blessing on you. He wants his blessings to overtake you. So as the next song's coming, it's all about the blessing and it coming over you and your legacy. So just receive and come forward and receive prayer.